Jimmy. Jimmy. Hey, everybody. I am Jimmy Fallon. I am in for Greg Gutfeld. And I'd just like to say before we start, if you do like my jacket, it also comes in men's. <laughs> For those of you who don't know me watching at home, I am a former New York City cab driver, and the truth is I'm actually lucky to be alive because the driving in this town is psychotic. New York is the only city in the world where you signal after you've already made it into the next lane. <laughs> Anywhere else in America, if you want to go left, you put on your blinker like, hey, I'm going left. But if you do that here, they block you. <laughs> so instead, you have to go left, then you put on your blinker like, ha ha, I made it. <laughs> But the other thing you need to know about me is I grew up in an era where late night comedy was something the whole country could share. That's what life was in the 1980s. Every regular person could share late night and every celebrity could share Madonna. Um, <laughs> if you didn't laugh at that, it's because it burns when you pee. But stick with me. <laughs> so tonight what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to unite the country with some basic truths I think we should all be able to agree on. And I know not all of you are going to love it, but you need to remember these are just jokes. If you don't like something I say, you don't have to get angry and hold up the show. Uh, you can email me afterwards at kissmyass.com. Um, <laughs> because this is the thing. Nobody cares. Jokes aren't hate crimes. And we even learned that when Kathy Griffin showed us that horrible plastic face. And afterwards, she sh held up Trump's head afterwards. <laughs> Folks, the point is, comedy is supposed to be treated like a buffet. If you see a joke you like, you throw it on your tray. If you don't like the joke, you don't stop the line and argue with the chef like, oh, no, you didn't. You know what I mean? You move on to the next item, we all get our own tray. Because the truth is, it's not just comics. Everybody in the world is having a hard time with speech police. One of my best friends just moved over to London, and he was telling me the other day, you can't even call a wussy a wussy over there. You have to call them Prince Harry. <laughs> And of course, I bring up the royals. Why? Because they're a rare point of unity in our country. The truth is, whether you're black, white, Asian, Muslim, Latino, deep down, we all want the same thing, which is for Meghan Markle to shut the f up. <laughs> Jimmy. Jimmy. But think about it. We're living in an America where 70% of the country is living paycheck to paycheck. Nobody wants to hear about the difficulties of being a princess, you tone-deaf idiot. So here's what I would say, Megster. If you're going to keep talking, at least make it interesting and do a true crime podcast about how you stole Prince Harry's balls. <laughs> and I'm just being honest with her, and I'm being honest with you, because nobody else will. Big tech censors the truth all the time. The White House hides everything. They said they'd be the most transparent administration in history, but please. Joe Biden thinks transparent is a man who has a baby. <laughs> Everybody in D.C., they just lie. They tell you student loan forgiveness is a thing. But the loans aren't forgiven. They're just passing the bill on to other people. And to be clear, I'm not even worried about paying for college because my son is six foot five. He's getting a women's basketball scholarship. <laughs> Jimmy. Jimmy. Yeah, you guys are saving up for school. I'm saving up for a backboard and probably a little duct tape. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Sorry, Link Man. But here is the deal. We're going soft in this country. Can't even beat your kids anymore. So they don't have to respect us. And I'm not telling you I want to beat my kid. But the fact that my kid knows I can't beat him is a problem. You dig? You ever get so mad at your kid you wonder if you could survive in prison? <laughs> like if I get through a month, I could smack this little bastard right here in Target. <laughs> and the whole concept that is so foreign to me, because I'm Italian, which means not only did I get beat as a kid, but my parents used weapons, OK? <laughs> Every Italian kid got beat with either a belt or a spoon. That's how it went down. And that wasn't the messed up part. The messed up part was you had to go get it for them. <laughs> Do you know how traumatic it is to go get an inanimate object that you know is going to destroy your life? It's the closest thing to buying an engagement ring. I can explain to you. <laughs> Jimmy, stomp it. My wife and I are actually married 16 years this year. 16 years. Oh, you got it. We're actually in an awkward spot because the last three times we went to the grocery store, we ran into my high school girlfriend. Weird. Yeah, but it's going to change because she's going to graduate. But uh, stick with <laughs> Jimmy. But here's the thing. 
And I'm telling you this because I care. If someone invented a time machine, the best thing you could do for society would be to put today's kids in it and dial 1982. You know that? Kid would come walking out in someone's living room all sassy, complaining about everything. A VCR? I'm not watching a VCR, Mommy. It takes all day. I am not watching. Some parent would just throw a shoe across the living room. Shut up, you know? Do you, is this like a, a symposium for abused kids? I'm sorry if that one hit home a little bit. <laughs> But do you remember when George Bush was your president? He was over in Iraq. Someone threw a shoe at him and he dodged it. That's because he got beat as a kid. <laughs> That's what I learned in that moment. Barbara Bush was a shoe thrower back in the day. <laughs> 20 years from now, someone throws a shoe at the president. He's getting smoked because he won't know how to dodge it. You understand? Except they won't throw a shoe. They'll throw a Snickers bar and he'll die of a peanut allergy. <laughs> The point I'm trying to make is tough times call for tough measures. And if we're going to turn this country around, we need to dish out some tough love. And I know it sounds risky in an age of incentivized outrage, but I'm still all about it. Because the truth is, it takes balls for a man to get ahead in 2023. And if we're being honest, it takes balls for a woman, too. Jimmy.